Well, it's always a pleasure to have our buddy Senator Ted Cruz on the program. Ted, how are you, sir? Mark, I'm doing terrific. Great to be with you. Well, it's a pleasure. And Ted has written a killer book, Unwoke, How to Defeat Cultural Marxism in America. Now, by now, Ted, you've probably done about 30 interviews and your head's about to fall off your shoulders. I've been through this. But that said, uh, you have the ability to explain things like few others. So explain to everybody why you wrote this book in the first place. Uh, Well, um, as you know, the very first interview I did was with you Sunday night on your show, and we spent the whole hour talking about it. And and, and it's a book, I, I wrote this book really to explain what in the hell is going on in our country? So many millions of, of Americans, so many millions of your listeners are looking around at how did things get so insane, so extreme, so quickly? And, and this book is designed to explain that. And, and, it, and it focuses on how the radical left has seized the major institutions of our nations. It starts with the universities. And I call the universities the Wuhan lab of the woke virus. They, they are where the virus was created, they're where it's mutated, and they're where it's spread to other institutions. And then each chapter focuses on a different institution. So it goes from universities to K through 12 education. And, and with the garbage of critical race theory and transgender extremism being forced on children. From there, it goes to journalism and the radicalization of the corporate media. From there, it goes to big business and big business being turned into the woke enforcers of the left wing. From there to to big tech and the rabid censorship from big tech. From there to entertainment, the most dangerous of all of them, Hollywood, movies, television, music, sports. And from there to science and the corruption and politicization of science. And what the book endeavors to do is, number one, explain how and why the radical left, the cultural Marxists, seized control of each of these institutions from inside. But number two, even more importantly, it lays out specific practical steps, a battle plan for how we take these institutions back. Mm -hmm. The book is Unwoke, How to Defeat Cultural Marxism in America. And we'll get to this issue of how we take these institutions back in a moment. I thought one of your most compelling chapters was on the media and the role of the media. I mean, we're supposed to have a free press. I mean, the press is free to do it at once, if that's what they mean by a free press. But it's not really a free press, is it? It it, it is no longer. And and, and I I opened the book by contrasting where things were a decade ago. And, and, And I focused initially on CNN. Look, a decade ago. CNN, they aspire to be journalists. If you ask them what they wanted to do, they would say they want to present both sides of an issue. They want to be fair and balanced and objective. And they tried to do that. Now, they were terrible at it. They leaned left. But but a decade ago, when I was first elected to the Senate 11 years ago, I used to go on CNN once a week. I'd regularly go on CNN. In 2017, CNN had three town hall uh, town halls with me and Bernie Sanders, 90 minutes each, debating free enterprise versus socialism. And, and they were, I think, CNN's highest rated programs that whole year. That's back when CNN was actually operating as, as journalists. When Donald Trump became president, Trump broke the media. It shattered, sh- he shattered their brains. They hate him so much that they abandoned, they no longer view their role as presenting both sides of an issue. They are advocates. They are propagandists. Today, if CNN has a panel, it's five people discussing how Donald Trump is the devil. That's the only view that is acceptable, and they're obsessed with it. You know, you take something like like the rabid pro-Hamas protesters that stormed the White House this weekend, that put graffiti, that defaced monuments all over D.C. If you watch CNN, never happened. If you watch MSNBC, never happened. ABC, CBS, NBC did not happen. Why? Because they view their role as being advocates. And I got to say, that's terrible for America. We need we need a functioning press corps. And by the way, and I explain this in the book, the corruption of journalism is a huge part of why Democrats have gotten so radical and extreme because they can vote for ridiculous extreme positions and rest calmly serene that nobody in the media will report on it. None of their constituents will know about it. And, and so they're never, ever 
held accountable for anything they do. And that is a great point. And um, you look at CNN, you look at MSNBC, despite what's going on in the Middle East, Ted Cruz, which is horrendous, what was done to the state of Israel, now Israel's trying to defend itself. Whatever the Biden administration comes up with, they support, like this phrase, humanitarian pause. Yep. All through the weekend, they were using that phrase. Netanyahu's doing an interview on uh, ABC's Sunday show, and the host there keeps saying, are you going to support a humanitarian pause? So they just sit there and push even the language of the Democrat Party. No? Uh, they absolutely do. And, and, and they're not just the Democrat Party. They are the left wing of the Democrat Party. So, so they push everyone to the left. And, and, and you look at, 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 at Israel, and, and this is something that I've outlined at, at great length on, on my podcast, Verdict with Ted Cruz. The Biden administration has undermined Israel literally every day from the beginning of this war. This war began one month ago today on October 7th with the worst mass murder of Jews since the Holocaust. And and the night the, 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 the attack was happening, the Biden State Department tweeted out calling on Israel not to retaliate and saying violence solved nothing and there should be no military retaliation. This is as Hamas is targeting civilians, murdering civilians deliberately, raping women and little girls, murdering infants, killing 1,400 Israelis. And the Biden State Department at three in the morning, as this is ongoing, is urging Israel, do not retaliate, do not strike back at the terrorists, just allow your citizens to be murdered. Now, at three in the morning, I blasted that on Twitter and I said, whoever wrote this should be fired, whoever approved it should be fired. They deleted it within the hour. The next day, Tony Blinken, the secretary of state, tweeted out again that he just talked with, with the tur Turkish foreign minister, and they were urging a ceasefire. Now, mind you, they, they don't mean Hamas should stop be terrorists. They don't mean Hamas should release the hostages. They mean Israel should stop killing terrorists. Again, I blasted that tweet. Again, they deleted that. That was the next day. Now we have Joe Biden going to Israel and Tony Blinken going to Israel. And what are they saying? Ceasefire, humanitarian pause. What they're saying is Israel do not... Con kill terrorists, and the media are actively complicit in this. And in fact, the media is part of Hamas's strategy. They know that when they use Palestinian human shields and Palestinian women and children are killed, that the useful idiots in the media will use that fact to, to demonize Israel. And so Hamas is counting on the radical left-wing bias of the American media. And, and uh, Ted Cruz, when we come back, by the way, the book is Unwoke, How to Defeat Cultural Marxism in America. Mr. Producer, let's put it on all my social platforms and link it to Amazon. Um, and by the way, you need to tell Regnery to start printing some books, brother, between you and me. When we come back, my question is going to go beyond this. Colleges and universities and what's happening in our streets. We'll be right back. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. We're here with Senator Ted Cruz. Before we go on, Ted, tell us about this election you have coming up. People don't realize you're running for re-election and you're in a hell of a race. I, I am. I'm running for re-election in 2024, so a year from, from today. And and it is going to be a massive battle. My last election, uh, re-election in 2018, was at the time it was the most expensive Senate race in U.S. history. And we were outspent three to one. Money flooded into the state of Texas. The Democrats more than doubled Democrat turnout in the state of Texas. And we won by less than three points. We won by 2.6 percent. Uh, it was an incredibly close race. And, and given that, Chuck Schumer has already made clear that that I am his number one target in the country and and they are going to flood the state of Texas. They're going to spend more than one hundred million dollars trying to beat me. And, and their likely nominee is a guy named Colin Allred. He's a Democrat congressman who his first four years in the House voted 100 percent with Nancy Pelosi, he literally did not deviate 
on a single vote. And by the way, you want a clear distinction of what's happening with Hamas and Israel? At the beginning of the Biden administration, I led a group of 17 senators urging the Biden administration, don't send hundreds of millions of dollars to Gaza because it will end up in the hands of Hamas and be used for terrorism to murder Israelis and murder Americans. At the same time, 150 House Democrats, including Colin Allred, sent a letter to, to the Biden administration saying, please do send hundreds of millions of dollars to Gaza, even though it, it will be used to fund Hamas and fund terrorism. And the Biden administration itself concluded, in its own words, there was, quote, a high risk that the money would be used for terrorism by Hamas. Under normal anti-terrorism laws, you can't send the money, but the Biden administration waived U.S. anti-terrorism law because their left-wing politics mattered more than avoiding terrorism. And so literally the death squads in Israel were as a practical matter funded by the Biden administration, and my likely Democrat opponent urged them to do that, and he's going to have $100 million. So I will say... Um, I hope that everyone listening buys the book, but I hope you also go to tedcruz.org, 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 and, and sign up, volunteer, and make a contribution because we're in one heck of a battle. Mr. Producer, let's put that as well on all the social platforms, if you would. And if you can help, ladies and gentlemen, I know Ted would appreciate it. Uh, we've backed Ted from day one before anybody else, and we cannot lose him. On election night while we're watching election returns and all of a sudden Texas elects this radical left wing kook Democrat and replaces him uh, the most effective, certainly one of the most effective conservative senators in my lifetime. All right, let's get back. Unwoke, how to defeat cultural Marxism in America. You can get it at Amazon.com, any major bookstore uh, or warehouse store for that matter. Uh, Our students, people in the streets pushing anti-Semitism, embracing terrorism. What's that all about, Ted Cruz? Well, it is all a manifestation of cultural Marxism. It's what this book is all about. And, and what I explain in the book is, is Marxism. What Karl Marx laid out is, is, is a worldview that views the society as a fundamental conflict between oppressors and victims. And, and Marx put it in socioeconomic terms. So the oppressors were the owners of capital. And the victims were the proletariat, the working class. And his solution was a violent revolution of the proletariat using government force to overthrow the oppressors and forcibly redistribute the wealth and power to the victims. Those Marxists I describe in the book became professors at elite universities in the United States starting in the 60s and 70s. There it mutated. So it wasn't just Marxism based on socioeconomic class. It became critical race theory. Same view of conflict, oppressors and victims, but this time based on race. Then it it transmogrified to gender and gender identity and sexual orientation. And, and, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, I I was meeting with a very, very successful tech entrepreneur in Silicon Valley who has historically leaned left. He's been a Democrat. And, And he was asking, he said he was horrified by the rabid, anti-Semitism on the left, whether the squad in the House or these crazed anti-Israel protesters on college campuses threatening Jewish students. And he was asking, where the hell did this come from? And I explained, I said, listen, in the modern extreme left, Jews are coded as oppressors and Palestinians are coded as victims. And so accordingly, the cultural Marxist They are rooting for the Palestinians to engage in violent revolution, the violent overthrow of their oppressors, the Jews. And it's why you see organizations like Black Lives Matter openly cheering on the Hamas terrorists. It's why you see 35 student groups at Harvard putting out a ridiculous, bigoted, anti-Semitic statement that every murder, every rape, every atrocity carried out by Hamas terrorists is 100 percent the fault of israel that is the conclusion of this rabid marxist ideology and and it underscores the need we've got to take these institutions back it's incredible and if we can't take them back shouldn't we at least start defunding aspects of them 
Yes, yes, yes. Cut off the money. And one of the best things we're seeing is we're seeing donors at major universities cutting off millions of dollars, saying if you are going to breed a bunch of rabid anti-Semites, if you're going to refuse to protect your Jewish students. Look, I, I saw a video at Harvard, my alma mater, of a Jewish student walking along being surrounded by yeah, the, these that. rabid anti-Semites harassing him, threatening him. And where the hell is Harvard University? Anyone who does that to any student ought to be mm-hmm. expelled immediately. And yet these university administrators are so woke that they're not willing to protect the safety of the Jewish students on campus. By the way, uh, Ted Cruz, am I wrong? Because I'm doing the radio show. Did uh, the Democrat governor win re-election in Kentucky? Uh, It certainly looks like it. Um, I don't know that they've called it, but according to the New York Times right now, he's at 52.7 percent and Daniel Cameron's at 47.3 percent, which is really heartbreaking, particularly given the I I, I don't know how how that happened in Kentucky. That's disappointing. Well, isn't he a uh, Mitch McConnell protege? He is. Isn't and, he exactly and, the kind of candidate from a philosophical point of view that Mitch McConnell wants to run in every state in the union? Uh, look, that's the, it is certainly the case that Mitch McConnell believes that you, the way you win elections is with lukewarm candidates, with candidates who, who, who don't stand for anything. And I, I don't mean this to be critical of Cameron. I, 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 I like Daniel personally, but, but Mitch's approach is he wants Republican candidates who stand for nothing and, and that the only thing they campaign on is, well, Democrats are worse than we are. I, I think that's a disastrously failed approach. But my the point is you you're elections. right, because Trump yeah. won Kentucky by over 20 points. Yes, and this a- gentleman who seemed to have all the credentials is attorney general and so forth, and he loses. And this is prototype. This is a prototypical candidate. Nothing personal to the man. Not at all. But this is the prototypical candidate that Mitch McConnell wants running in every state. And then he blames the Tea Party or he'll blame Donald Trump or he'll blame somebody else when they don't get the victories that they insist on. Why doesn't he ever get behind the conservatives rather than whining all the time? That's now, look, just it, me. It, you don't it, have to answer that. It, it's a massive problem. I, I, I emphatically agree. And I'll tell you, it's one of the reasons why I need the help. Uh, of your listeners in my race. So in 2018, while I'm facing the most expensive Senate reelect Senate election in U.S. history and being outspent three to one, that cycle, Mitch McConnell's super PAC spent three hundred million dollars supporting Republicans nationally. You know how much he spent in Texas? Zero. Uh, Not a damn penny. And I was in a race I won by less than three percentage points. But frankly, our leadership would rather a Democrat than a Republican who actually stands up to leadership and fights for conservative values. And it's why my base is support. Oh, look, I would not be in the Senate, Mark, without you. And when I ran in, in 2012 and no one thought I had a prayer, you would have me on the radio and, and you would say, we're doing a Levin surge. <laughs> and I'd sit, I'd sit there on my phone and I would get an email for every online contribution and my phone would just explode with yeah. thousands of contributions that people would go to tedcruz.org. It was powerful, and your voice is, is desperately needed. And we're going to do that again uh, when we get a little closer to this, because you're going to need the money, and you're not going to get it from the a lot of these people in the establishment. And you're exactly right. McConnell and his elk would rather purify the Republican Party, purify it, than, uh, than be in the majority. And then when they fail... Because the American people, I'm going to be honest, particularly Republicans, are more conservative than much of the Republican leadership. Yeah. They want some action. They want some, yeah, undoubtedly. Uh, and uh, they just play too much footsie, the establishment, with the bureaucracy, with the uh, lobbyists and all the rest. And people have had enough of it, particularly conservatives and Republicans. Well, I, I want to congratulate you on this book. It's fantastic. Again, I want to encourage you folks. Go to Amazon.com, or if you're going to go to Costco or one of those places, uh, they'll have his book. But if they don't, it's not hard to get it. You can go to Amazon.com. The book is Unwoke, How to Defeat Cultural Marxism in America. Absolutely superb. It's got uh, Senator Cruz's wisdom in there. And he does have solutions in there. And I'll let you read the book to find them out. Uh, But I think you're going to really like it. It's in plain English. It's very understandable. 
Uh, it exposes a tremendous amount. And you might say at this point, well, what's the point? What's the point? Ideas. That's the point. The Constitution is an idea. The Declaration is an idea. Marxism is an idea. We've got to confront them on ideas. Correct, Senator? Absolutely right. We've got a battle to take it back. And look, the book is optimistic. Um, the chapter on K-12 through education focuses on Loudoun County and, and the teenage girl who was sexually assaulted in the bathroom by a boy wearing a skirt, a girl's bathroom. The school district denied it. They said their ideology mattered more than protecting the kids. And in fact, they threw the, the father of the teenage girl. It, it, they arrested him. Mm-hmm. But moms in Virginia rose up and we flipped Virginia from a blue state to a red state. That's mm-hmm. the power of, of empowering and, and, and people. And I walk through in every chapter how we take these institutions back, whether it is buying media outlets, whether it is Elon Musk buying Twitter or or whether it is standing up to woke corporations and holding them accountable from Bud Light to Target, we're winning big victories. And so I just want to encourage everyone, please go to your bookstore, go to Barnes & Noble, go to Amazon, buy the book tonight. And by the way, it makes a great Christmas gift for a family member or a friend. And, and I'll say the book is designed to be fun and readable. It's not an abstract academic book. It's not dry. It's war stories. It's interesting. It's fun. And you will put it down knowing much more about how to fight to save our country. Unwoke, How to Defeat Cultural Marxism in America, Amazon.com, anywhere books are sold. Well, not anywhere. Sometimes they don't sell our books, but you know what I mean. Senator, God bless you, and thank you, my friend. Be well. God bless you, and I think you're right. The commie bookstore doesn't carry it. (laughs) That's correct. All right, take care.